Hello, hello! Again, as you guys all know, we're back here. We're doing it. We are going to learn about Jesus and his message. Sorry, I had to adjust my chair. That was not going to be comfortable sitting here for a little while. But just wanted to say, hey, hope you guys are doing well. And um, yeah, let's open up in a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you so much that we can all be here together and that we as weeks go by, we're getting more and more clarity on this new situation and ways to move forward. Please be there for all the students here and that they know that you're always there for them when times are good and when times are bad. Please help their hearts to open and that they can really take in this lesson and the importance of missionaries and the work that they do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so here we are. So... Unfortunately, I can't, again, every single time. Don't know, it's just a bummer because I have cake already and everything for you guys. But, so we're just going to visually in your minds come up with this illustration. Okay, imagine I give each of you guys cake and I say, here's a spatula and here's frosting. So the cake we're gonna say is this big, okay? But I say I only want you to frost this big, okay? So just put the frosting there on the cake, okay? So you do that. And then again, I go put more frosting in that same area, just make it taller. And then taller, and then do it again, and again, and again. So then it just gets this little space, and then it just gets higher and higher, right? Um, and do it as high as you can. So, do you think that would work realistically if you were just stacking frosting on top of each other? Do you think that's really going to work? Um, no. No. And why not? Why would it not work just to try to do little drops over the top and top and top? Right? That's not the way you're supposed to frost a cake. Um, and you guys all know this. So, um, as you guys know, frosting... and cakes and cupcakes it's supposed to be spread out over all the top not just like one dinky little part I don't want a cake without all the toppings and fixings um yeah so this frosting right it's not meant to be stacked in this illustration is supposed to be able to help us um understand more fully exactly what Jesus's commands are for his disciples which is what we're gonna do okay so, I have some clues that we're going to go over. Okay, so one, these are footprints. As you can see, this guy's hiking and then there's footprints. The next is a globe clue. Okay. Here are some people. The third clue, a bunch of different people. And the last clue is... The Bible. So all of these four clues, so the footprints, the globe, the kids, and the Bible, they all represent something about God's command, um, and they are um, the only hints I'm going to give you. So to yourselves, do you think you know what the command is? We talked a little bit about it in the prayer, so hopefully you're kind of picking it up. There's some footsteps, the world, a bunch of different people in the Bible. Hmm, I wonder what it could be. Okay, so turn to Matthew 28, 18 to 20. So we're going to read that first. So that's Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Again, pause it if you need. And after that, I'm going to read as well Acts 1, 8 to 9. Again, that's Acts 1, 8 to 9. So I'm going to read these back to back. So if you have those like marked, pause if you need to, do what you have to. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. Okay. So Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I'm sure we've all heard this before. Um, this verse, it's pretty popular, but I'll read it one more time. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you to the end of the age. Okay, and next I'm going to read Acts um, 1, 8 to 9. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all of Judea, Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And when he has said these things, as they are looking, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and the cloud took him out of their sight. So I'll read that one more time. But both of these, Jesus is telling us some things that we should know and pay attention to. Okay. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And when he has said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Okay. So... Visual clue one was the what? Footsteps. Okay, I'll just show you guys one more time. It was the footsteps, right? So what do you think these footsteps represent? Probably for us to go, right? This person is walking, there's a trail, go. That's what Jesus commanded and that's what the first clue means. The, these footsteps are go, get out, walk, run, whatever you have to do. Okay, so... Thinking back to the verses, there were some potentially places mentioned, like on the globe. Where do we think, what do we think those places or whoops, this globe represents? What do we think? So I'm going to say Jerusalem, maybe Judea, and maybe Samaria. Maybe the ends of the earth. So all nations too, right? So um, the globe, it's not discriminating. It's the clue has given us, just like what Jesus said, all nations, everyone. Okay, so what words in these verse do you think the picture of the people represent? So there's a bunch of different people in here. Who do you think they represent um, when we read these two verses? Hmm. Maybe all the nations, all the people in all the nations on earth and every part of earth um, to make disciples too, right? So the, so the first one is, ooh, wrong way, go, right, all over, all over to the ends of the earth, to all these people. And then the last clue is the Bible. So what words in this verse do you think the Bible represent? What do we think? Right? teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, right? The Bible is full of commands and how we live our life. And um, this is what he's saying. So teach people this. Teach people what I have commanded you. And be a witness to Jesus and Christianity and do the same thing back, right? Okay. So Jesus spoke these words to the disciples um, before he ascended into heaven um, about 2,000 years ago. So that last one was when he was giving his final like blessing, like here is what I need you guys to do, and then he skedaddled. Um, Jesus wants us, right, to spread the good news and the gospel um, throughout the whole world, just like frosting in this cake, right? Frosting is not just supposed to be on one little portion. No, it's supposed to be over the whole thing, and it tastes so much better anyway that way. Frosting is my favorite part. I'm going to be honest. Um, right? So Jesus commanded disciples to do um, the spreading. So take his word, the Bible, in order to make disciples of every nation on earth with every person. That includes every country, every race, every language, every tribe, and every ethnic group. All these, no one is... Um, not given access to, right? Okay, so um, Jerusalem is back, and you guys know that's in the Middle East. Um, I don't really have a map to show you guys, but um, that was um, where the disciples first established the first church. I don't know if you can see it, there's a little like 
church temple thing. Um, this was in a very, very tiny area of the world. Jerusalem is not the size of the United States. It was a very small, small portion, right? Um, uh, and they did it just as Jesus commanded. They built this to go for it. So they preached the message of the gospel, and many Jews came to salvation um, through this uh, church. Um, the disciples continued to teach new Christians about what it means to be a disciple and follow Jesus' commands, but the church was made up only of one type of people. Can you guess? In Jerusalem? Jewish people. So only one type of people. Thankfully, they were all becoming Christian, which is really exciting, but it wasn't um, reaching, far reaching. So did the very first church and the very first disciples simply stay in Jerusalem? Do you think they're like, ah, well, this is where I'm at. I'm not going to move. No, of course not, because we wouldn't know, right? But to answer that more, how would we know that this is not the case, that they didn't just stop in Jerusalem? Okay, so the book of Acts um, that we read first when Jesus was ascending, that verse, um, tells us about the travels of the early disciples of Paul and Barnabas when they went out from Jerusalem, and I'm sure you've heard of Barnabas before, um, spreading the gospel and establishing churches. So he, that was like their mission. They're like, okay, don't we need to do here? Let's go share it with other people. So that's all about what the book of Acts is talking about, right? So, um, yeah, it's not going to work. So, see, there's like other little churches for you to look at. Um, but in Rome, unfortunately and really sadly, Paul was killed and the other disciples that had been with Jesus also died in this area of the world. So, is there any proof that the gospel kept spreading even to places far, far away? What do you guys think? Is there proof that we have that um, the gospel continued to move? Do we, what do we think? So, there is this activity, but we can't really do it. Um, so... Yeah, um, unfortunately, I don't really think we can do it, but I think that I'm just going to read. So what we have are one, six missionary cards um, about people who are missionaries um, for the gospel, um, and I will read them out loud, and they go with a corresponding country because um, they were all in a certain place in the world. So just for the matching sake, um, and this is going to kind of illustrate the point that, um, the spread of the gospel didn't end with the first disciples. Um, there are men and women and thousands more in every, right in every new generation, there's more and more Christians. Um, and they all went out to new places and to seek new people in the world. Um, and they were called missionaries, right? Um, we have a couple missionaries at church, um, a lot of churches, be, and they're called missionaries because their mission is to spread the gospel, um, right? So go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. So I'm going to read these out loud um, just so we have a little bit of context for missionaries. And I know what you guys, I know you guys know what missionaries are, but okay. So the first one is, her name's Gladys Aylward. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at reading. Okay. My name is Gladys. I was born in 1902. I went to be a missionary in China. I opened up an inn called the Inn of Eight Happinesses. In the inn, I offered to people food and a bed to sleep. But better yet, I offered to tell them the new story that they had never heard before. That story was of Jesus. So, I'm pretty sure we know where this one matches to. If you can see, it says... China because woo, she was in China and she spread the good news in the way she did right okay so my name is David Brainerd I was born in northeastern part of the United States in 1718 not far from my home lived Native American people who had never heard the gospel though I was young God called me to bring the gospel to them in a short time that I was a missionary Jesus saved many uh, Native Americans so where do we think this one is? I'm going to assume it's the United States. Okay, so you get the whole point. Um, there's 
four more that I'm going to read. My name is Nate Saint. I was born in 1923 and became a missionary pilot to unreachable people groups deep in the jungle of Ecuador, South America. My friend and I wanted to preach the gospel to um, those people. Although I was killed trying to reach um, this remote area after I died, they did hear and respond to the gospel. So I would say it's Ecuador, right? Right there. Okay. Cool. Um, there is a few more and I'm just going to read them and then, yeah. My name is David Livingstone. I was born in 1813. I became a missionary doctor and traveled through many miles of the jungle and deserts in Central Africa. I wanted to take the gospel where it had never been before on a large continent. Life was very hard. We were often sick with malaria and other diseases. There was danger from wild lions and cruel slave traders also. So, again, Central Africa is where... He was a missionary at. My name is Amy Carmichael. I was born in 1867. I went to India and was a missionary there for 55 years. I worked to rescue abandoned and abused children. Many came to live with me and I shared with them the love and hope of Jesus. The people called me Ama, which in their language means mother. So, lastly, and she's from India. Lastly, my name is John Wycliffe. I was born in um, 13. 24. Actually, this is kind of crazy because I'm pretty sure this guy is where, when I went to study abroad in Oxford, this was the guy's college I was at there, Wycliffe Hall. Very interesting. I was a teacher at Oxford University and I did not go out to preach the gospel, but I did send the gospel out. How I translated the Bible into the common language of my country, English. Ordinary people could now read the Bible. I also helped send missionaries out to spread the gospel. Okay, so as you can see, there is a, a lot, a lot, a lot of different people in different parts of the world long ago and more recent that were missionaries and spreading the gospel, right? So do we think, though, that because of these people, the missionary work is done? No. No, it isn't. There are still places all around the world where millions of people have never heard the gospel. There are places where there's no missionaries ever gone. And even when missionaries do go to some of these places, they need to translate the Bible into the languages that these native people speak. Because not everyone speaks English or whatever other language. Um... Because they need to be able to read the word for themselves. There are more than 18,000 languages spoken that have no Bible translated into that language. Okay, so imagine, well not imagine, there are almost 7,000 languages worldwide, um, different ones, and less than half of the people, half of those languages um, have the Bible translated into that um, so that means a lot of people would be left out. That would be a huge majority of people left out that don't have access, like, they don't have the ability to communicate like this about Jesus, which we're so fortunate and grateful, uh, I'm so grateful for. I'm actually getting chills because that's just so cool. Um, so why is it, though, important that other people around the world have a Bible in their own language? Does it matter? Does it matter that they don't have it? Um, the Bible, right, is God's truth and is necessary for knowing and understanding the message of the gospel and how we must be saved. So, without it, we are very, 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 um, what's the word? I can't think of the word, but we don't, we've lost the ability there. Uh, I don't know the word. I'm sure you know what I'm trying to say, right? The Bible is necessary to instruct Christians. It's necessary to instruct me. It's necessary to instruct you um, on how to live righteous and how to live holy um, and growing in obedience to Jesus more and more each day and um, all his commands. So we need the Bible to do this. We can't. Without it, we would be really lost. Um, so... For us, because um, we all speak English, um, the Bible was not originally um, in our own language. We, um, nor was the first church near Los Angeles or Orange County, Fullerton, Santa Ana. So one, the Bible was not in our language originally. Two, nowhere near America was um, the first church established. 
um, yet um, Jesus' disciples long ago, which is really exciting, obeyed his command um, to go out and make disciples of um, all people and all nations. And that's the reason we've heard God's message and have God's word in our own language, right? So, as you can imagine, with the frosting and the cake, when you finally spread the frosting everywhere, um, Jesus, it's just like Jesus wants the gospel to be spread everywhere. He doesn't want it just on this little section of the cake. No, he wants it all over equally. There are two main ways to obey God's command to go into the world for, um, with the gospel. So first is go somewhere and, or send someone. So go means to be a missionary who actually gets to go somewhere to share the message of the gospel to people in different cultures. So those are the people that I was reading, uh, that I read about those different examples. Um, and maybe even in a different language. So what do you think send someone means? Hmm. <laughs> missionaries, right, they go on this special, um, Missionaries who go need special things, right? If you're a missionary, um, like at church, there's offering, there's donations, right? Jesus wants Christians to provide those things. So if you aren't the person actually going and doing this, there's still ways that you can help and support missionaries on their journey. Missionaries need prayer, encouragement, and money to do the work of spreading the gospel. In the book of Revelations, the last book in the Bible, God gives the Apostle John a glimpse of the song that is sung in heaven about Jesus. So this is the last flipping, and that's going to be in Revelations 5, 9 to 10. Again, that's Revelations 9, 5 to 10. Okay. Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seal, for you were slain, and by your blood you were ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Okay. Whew. Very cool lesson. So I wish we were all together because I'd really want to learn more about the missionaries that you guys know of. And um, we can really openly discuss and learn of ways how you can help and I can help. Um and things like that, because there are people that are called to be missionaries, but that's not everyone's uh, maybe spiritual gift, but there's other ways you can still help move forward um, God's command. So we are now going on to the worksheet, which looks like this, um, and this is something you guys can do with your parents, um, if you guys would like. Um, so it has a thing where you can place a picture here. So, um, that's where if you had a picture of a missionary or if you knew someone who was a missionary, they could do that. And we've had many missionaries, um, at Crossway. I mean, you know some of your parents have done mission trip themselves, whether that's, um, medical. I know, um, Mia's family moved over here from China and they were missionaries. Um, so there are people that we know, um, that have helped and, um, unfolding God's mission with the in God's gospel and the gospel with the tools they were given which is amazing right so there is going to be an about section so what you can do is where these people have visited you can put some about those places that's what that section's for um so this could be some important facts about the country or the group of people that are going on the missions trip um that they're serving so maybe how many people live there um and this is all in the directions what language they speak what um what they need um things like that so that's just going to be the about area and last is um ways you guys can pray for missionaries and um, how you guys can help even if you aren't traveling, especially in this COVID situation. No one is really traveling, traveling as um, you would think. So um, one of the ways is like I was talking about financially. So that's in the offering. Um, and that might not be what you guys are able to do because you don't have a paycheck and you don't have things like that. But you guys can pray for um, missionary safety, the people that live their safety, that they um, have seeds planted in their hearts. So even if they don't become a Christian while 
the missionaries there, they have that seed planted and that knowledge and that thirst for wanting to learn more and wanting to see more of what is out there. Um, there's a lot of different ways, and I think that this could be something you can do at night or in the morning and as um, you go to bed and when you look at maps and stuff, then this can really um, be something you can remember and add to kind of your daily routine. So we're going to close in a word of prayer and um, yeah, spend fun. Okay, so we're going to pray. Dear Lord, thank you that we have the ability to communicate with you in have the privilege to know you and know more about you um, because we speak and we are able to read the Bible in a language that we all understand. Thank you that we can do lessons and learn more about you over YouTube and on our phone and through the internet and all different types of ways that we have that capacity and knowledge in order to do that. I thank you so much because if this was not happening... If this was happening hundreds of years ago, we would not be able to worship you as we do now. Um, please be with these students and help them to know and grasp and understand that. Um, and be truly amazed by the wonderful faithfulness in God and um, his people throughout history. And all the people that have continued to spread the word um, thousands and thousands of years ago. Um, pray God that you would be stirring in all these students and all these kids listening that they have a lifelong desire to be active participants in Jesus's great um, mission for us um, and the great commission that he has um, called us to as Christians um, and leaders. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Okay so that's it. Um, miss you guys so much. Cake would be really fun. So when we're all back together the first time, I will bring the cake, bring lots of treats because, oh, one second. Trader Joe's has these new cake cookie sandwiches and they're amazing. So I might even bring some of those. Okay. See you guys. Bye.